On this week's edition of Performance TV, we're going to show you how to keep your car's engine cool. It's a breeze. And this Harley is going to get a big upgrade. Welcome to another edition of Performance TV. Matt and Tommy are over here getting this old radiator out of this 66 Chevelle. Sid here with us today from Champion Cooling Systems. Sid, we're not only gonna be putting a much more efficient radiator in this car over here, but one that's gonna look a lot nicer. The radiators back in the day, well, they made out of copper and... Yeah, they're made out of copper and they're just not as efficient because the cores, the tubes were spaced further apart and then the fins in between the tubes were also spaced further apart. So they just didn't cool as well. But the all aluminum radiator is a high density core. Tubes are closer together and the fins 14 to 16 per inch, giving much more cooling, 30 to 40% over the original copper brass radiator. And the construction with Champion Cooling Systems, the way you braze everything on both sides too. Yes, yes. The cores are brazed on both sides. You can see here and also on the other side. So the tubes are really secured to the header plate and making it really strong. Well, in addition to what we're gonna be doing over here and what we see a lot of folks doing with their show cars, at Champion Cooling Systems, you have a little bit of something for everything. We do, we have external trans coolers. This is an expansion tank for the old Ford FE motors for like the Thunderbirds. We have the stainless steel overflow tanks. And we also have a line for ATVs and motocross as well. Wow, a little bit of everything, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this car much more efficient and it's cooling and look a lot nicer. Let's get that old radiator out. All right. So you guys getting close on getting her out? Yeah, Matt here from Champion Cooling Systems helped me get this radiator out. We've taken the shroud off already. We got the, uh, the antifreeze drained out of it. Got some hose loosens up. We're uh, just about ready to pull this out. Awesome, here. well let me know when you're ready for the new one. I'll bring it over. All right, so, so Matt, we've got all this out. One of the little tricks that you taught me was disconnect the bottom hose before you take the cap off to get the fluid out. Yeah, what ends up happening, if you just uh, take the cap off first and then pull the bottom hose off, it just flows out and makes mess all over your floor. So you can control the flow of the water going out by taking the cap off slowly. Perfect, that's a good tip to have. A Champion has every, all the radiators you have, it's a direct bolt in, there's no fabricating it. It'll bolt right back into the factory brackets, correct? Yep, what we end up doing is going through and taking the copper brass, like the one we're taking out of this car, and we have an engineering department, we go through and reverse engineer the copper brass for the new aluminum. So we can get as exact as we can as just like the original copper brass. I raced against Eddie Hill in Top Fuel and you were, you were telling me uh, recently building radiators for Eddie Hill, what's he using them on? Well, he's got a project uh, car where uh, it was a high horsepower application and need more cooling. So he actually took one of our radiators and put in the pod behind his head. Well, that's pretty cool, you custom build anything, not just a direct replacement, but you also do custom work as well. Uh, we definitely do. There's, uh, if people have a unique application, we can usually take one of the radiators that we already have and change the tanks or the fitting to be able to fit something. All right. We just lift this straight up. A little last minute fluid there. You got that? Ooh, he's replaced. Yes, it does. Well, Matt, these old muscle cars, they're, they're hard to cool anyway, but look at this radiator. I mean, the one we're gonna put in, I, I can see a noticeable difference. Yeah, well, what ends up happening with the original copper brass is over time with any radiator, they start leaking at the bottoms where the tubes meet the headers, and you can see that some of the fins are starting to get knocked over and impedes the flow through uh, air going through the radiator. So what we end up doing, as you can see the difference, uh, we actually have more tubes going all the way across. So the tubes going down are actually a little bit closer, and then we take the density of the fins and we make it closer. So what it ends up doing is making this radiator much more efficient than the older copper brasses. It's gonna work better, plus, I don't know about you, but it looks way oh, better. Let's get that thing in there. Let's go. Well, Matt, before we put this radiator in, you've got a neat example of the fins and why they cool so much better. Yeah, I do. This is actually the, the fins that are sitting in the radiator like that, and what they are, on the old copper brass, they were just strips that were crimped like that all the way through. But on this, on the aluminum ones, what we have is called louvered fin technology, and if you can see right in there, there's a bunch of little louvers. There's a lot of little fins in there, right? Yep, and it allows the wind, uh, as the air goes through the radiator and through the fins, it just dissipates more heat. Yeah, it's like double cooling almost. Mm -hmm. And another thing, just to be able to show this, the density of these fins, we've actually gone through and we engineered, and there's actually different densities. As you can see, if it was an older one, you'd have a large 
larger density down here, but we've actually gone through and actually found out the most efficient density for this to be crimped at. So when it goes in, that's the most efficient density you can get. With our radiators, as we told you before, all the, on most applications, the mechanical fan shroud can actually go right up to this. But I did bring some electric fans. You want to use them? Well, of course. We're going to make this thing cool. Let's put electric fans on it. Well, let's go for it. All right, let's get this back out and put the electric fans on. Perfect. This edition of Performance TV, presented by ARP, is being brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Steel rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Flowmaster, the exhaust technology company. RC Components, passion, pride, performance. And by Original Parts Group, the world's largest source for GM A-body parts and accessories. Back to Performance TV. Matt, come on over here with the radiator because what we're going to do while Tommy is over there getting the mechanical fan out, we are going to get the fans and the shroud put together for this. Now, Matt, there are all different types of applications. We have bigger motors, we got smaller motors, and it does matter what fans we put on. It does. There's a couple different ones that they have. They have, this is a typical slimline fan, and it's got different, they call it an S-blade fan. It's much smaller compared to what we're going to install in this car, which is a paddle fan. You can see the difference between how many blades are on it and the design of the blades. These are a lot different than they were, say, a couple of decades ago. Yeah, most typically on the electric fans that we were putting on these cars, they were S-blades, but now they're using more of the paddle blade design, which is, which is on the new cars that they have now. All right, let me get this one out of the way. We're going to mark our holes and get to drill in here. Yep, just line them up with the holes. All right. We're going to hold that and we go through. And we get our spots marked. All right. And one thing I want to make note before we take this is that most of the time when you drill, you have all these shavings on. Instead of taking like a cloth or your hand and brushing it off, I just want to take it and. Turn it upside down. Is that for Tommy to sweep up later? Yes, it is. Okay. Every application is going to be a little bit different. For this one and this Chevelle, are we going to mount this on the radiator first? Yeah, because we have enough room, we're going to take it, mount the fans to the shroud, and then take the shroud, mount it to the radiator, and then we'll drop the whole thing in as one unit. Okay. Matt, there's a couple of different ways that we can get the fans ready to, to mount on here. If folks at home, if they just want to use regular nuts and bolts, it works out fine, but you've got a special trick, and these kind of look like rivets. Yeah. What they're actually called are aluminum thread certs, and, and that's exactly what it is. It's a rivet. You actually use a tool that's very much like a rivet gun to install it, and you, you take the, the rivet, put it on the threaded piece, and you actually take it, put it in there and then pull it up just like a rivet. All right, well, we have one more to get finished here. We're gonna get these fans on because I know Tommy's anxious to get this radiator in. Take that on over to Tommy. I know he's ready and waiting. All right, Matt, you got that radiator done. Let's get it uh, put in the car here. All right. You got that side? I got the mechanical fan out of the way. We got the electric fans installed. Now, sitting in traffic, this is really going to keep this uh, old uh, hot rod cool, isn't it? Oh, yeah, because it's always pulling at maximum RPMs all the time. Unlike the mechanical fan, as the engine slows down at idle, so does the fan. All right, we'll slide it back in the uh, factory mounts, put some bolts in it. We'll get our uh, fans hooked up. We'll do some hot rod and see how cool we can keep it. Hey, Kathy, uh, this 66 Chevelle radiator, what else they got? Oh, Tommy, we've got all kinds of stuff. And what about some of the other applications? Well, for example, this is our, that's a cross, I mean, down close. So this is a cross flow for the, like, the 70s Chevelle, same application, shroud, electric fans. And then for the everyday car, we also have the same, this is the same version of this radiator, but in the plastic aluminum, which is in our American Eagle brand. That's also available, but much, much more economical. And, and even for somebody who needs something real special, you guys can hook them up. Exactly. And these are just examples of some of the custom tanks that we fabricate for pretty much any application somebody might have. They just call us up, and if we have the right size core, we can fab any size tanks and, and make whatever they would want. 
find out more about warranties, all the different applications and more, you have to do is hop on their website at championcooling.com. And we'll have more coming up next on Performance TV. Performance TV, presented by ARP, coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Hey, welcome back to Performance TV, where we're going to be making some bikes look really awesome. Chris Cross here with us from RC Components. Yep. You guys have been doing some really cool stuff since 1989, celebrating your 25th year this year. That's right. And, you know, you can just do a couple of things to your bike to really make it look like it was custom built. Yeah, what we can do with the bike is amazing. I mean, you can go from an air cleaner or a hand grip, something subtle, or we can totally blow it out of the water and do a, a huge 26 inch custom wheel, you know, fat tire rear, the exhaust, headers, tuner. Our catalog is huge, so we have a full product line. We can go from mild to you know, super wild with all of our stuff. We do everything under one roof in Bowling Green, Kentucky, from machining, polishing, chroming, assembly, shipping, all under one roof. So it's in the back door, out the front door on the shipping truck, and to your front door. You know, and just being able to see some of the really neat stuff that you've done here. I mean, these are truly custom bikes, but Tommy has a bike over here that I think you can just make a couple of changes to, Tommy, and it you're gonna have a custom looking bike. Well, Brent from RC Components and I are gonna show you today what you can do with your stock factory bike to make it look like a custom bike. Pretty simple, we're gonna put some tires and wheels on here. Nice looking tires and wheels, but Brent, we're gonna go from a 16 inch stock wheel to a 21 inch custom wheel. Are you sure it's gonna fit in here? Yes, it will. <laughs> it's, the, it's the biggest size that you can fit. Right, you've gotta do a couple little, couple little adjustments, minor, but it'll fit in here, right? Correct, yes. Uh, just drill the fender hole a little bit bigger, the rear mount. Right here hole. in the mount, so we can just tilt it a little for, bit, put the bolt clearance. back in. Yep. And then there's a bolt right here. We're going to trim that bolt off. On this model, classic model, it'll have a stud under that that we'll need to cut off. And other than that, it's good to go. Wow, it's going to be cool to see that in there. I mean, that's a good looking chrome wheel, huh? Yes. We do all the chroming in house. And because we do that, it has a seven year chrome warranty, so they'll stay looking good for a long time. Oh, absolutely. If they don't, you'll, you'll get them fixed. That's right. We'll take care of it. <laughs> all right, let's get busy taking this wheel off. Right, sounds good. Slide the spacer in. Yes, put the spacer inside. All right. There. All right. And then get this started. Yes. All right. Brent, that was that was pretty simple, and man, I mean, I, that thing looks great. I can't believe how well it fits. I mean, from 16 to 21, and it fits in there perfect with the uh, factory fender. Yes. All right. Well, now we got the back to do. Let's All go. right. Sounds good. The front was pretty simple. What all does it take to put the uh, rear wheel in? Uh, not too much. It's easy. Pretty easy as well. We're gonna have to take the left side exhaust loose. Uh, take the axle loose on the right side where we can get it out. Drive it out this way. Yep. Just drive it out, and that's all right, pretty much get, all there is to it. Let's get to it. On the front wheel, we put a new brake rotor on, but on the rear, we're gonna go ahead and pull the one off the factory wheel, put it on this wheel. The uh, pulley for the drive belt, we put it on this wheel, and uh, we'll slide it back in there as soon as Brent gets that off. down some.
Wow, Chris, you know, outside of changing the paint on a bike, changing the wheels is one of the biggest, or the easiest things you can do to make the biggest change. Now, what's the, uh, the model name or the style name on this wheel? Okay, this wheel that we put on this particular bike is a 21 inch majestic wheel. And we offer over 65 wheel designs for the person to choose from. So we have a little something for everybody. You know, um, this particular design is a very elegant six spoke design that can go along with everything, especially when you add in the uh, matching brake rotors uh, to complement the design. It just carries it throughout the bike. Yeah, and, and not just in chrome either. Exactly right. We also offer what's called an eclipse finish which the wheel is gloss or flat black, and then the accents inside the wheel, we actually go back and remachine those, so it gives you a good contrast of black and the raw aluminum. Yeah, like a mill after finish, which we see over here on this bike. And, yes. And just absolutely amazing and how easy it was to change the look. We're gonna do a lot more changing looks on this particular bike. We'll have more coming up next on Performance TV. This week's industry update from our friends at Leader Motorcycle. We're going to help you stay a little drier and a little warmer if you want to take your motorcycle out and ride it when it's rainy and cold. All you need to do is install what they call desert dogs. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can have these either in all black. You can get them with the studs. They're made in the USA and their patented design helps flow the air around you. Even helps with the helmet lift sometimes that you get from the wind and something else we talk about the rain. It's going to keep that water around the bike. Bugs too, not going to get all over your chrome back here. Want to talk about chrome? You can have a lot of that too with some of their E-Caddy design. A lot of their parts are made out of billet aluminum and then chromed so you can carry along your GPS, so you can have your iPod. These are some great looking, very sturdy mounts. So you can have your phone with you as you're going down the road. And if you want to be videoing what you are doing and when you're making your bike look all good with all the nice chrome, you want to make sure the camera that looks good too, you can have that. All you have to do is check out their entire line of products at leadermotorcycle.com. This edition of Performance TV presented by ARP is being brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Curry Akin, tell us what you ride and we'll show you what we've got. Leader Motorcycle Accessories, proudly made in America. Stage 8, the world's best locking fastener. And by B&M Racing and Performance, quality performance products that work. Welcome back to Performance TV. Well, we showed you how easy it was to make this bike look awesome. Now we're gonna make it perform even better with a whole lot of different components from RC Components. Brent, we're gonna start right here by getting this exhaust off. Okay. You have the O2 sensor out? Yes, it is. Is that friend loose? Nope. There we go. There it goes. And I'll take this out of the way. All right. This one comes off all in one unit, but what you guys have is a true dual exhaust. And I'll get the flanges off of it. Brent, we're going to get started putting this exhaust on. And I noticed that we've reused the factory flanges. Yes, correct. They're well made. So uh, there's no reason not to use. And that's pretty much what everybody does with the motorcycle exhaust. You want to start with this pipe first? Sure. All right, our front one and crossing over to the back. Looks like we just have the flange to do and then just a couple other places to bolt it on. That's it. I'll let you get your part started first. Okay. Wiggle it in here. Wiggle it in and get up on top. All right, I'm started here. Okay. And I'll get this one back here, tightened up. All right. Now we can do the rear head pipe. Okay. Compared to the factory sound, what kind of tone are we gonna get out of this? Uh, it's a deeper, richer tone. Definitely sounds a whole lot better. And with this uh, complete system, you also pick up 12 to 18 horsepower. Oh, so I like the sound of that. A lot of benefits to it. Okay, that tight. I think we're ready for some mufflers. Come on in here, Chris. Thank you. Folks know RC components for wheels. I mean, you guys have been doing those for years, but how long have you been doing exhaust? Yeah, we've been doing exhaust since 2007, and it has been growing like crazy ever since. It looks like this just is fully adjustable. Oh yeah, these four inch cans uh, slide right onto the RCX dual head pipes. You just use the factory brackets. 
and uh, you slide them up and put the bolts right into them. It's very simple to do. Okay, Chris, we got that tight. Man, it's a great looking exhaust tip, and that's just one of the many choices. That's exactly right. These four inch mufflers that we have, uh, we have over 20 different exhaust tips that we manufacture that the customer can choose from to coordinate the different looks and uh, customization of their bike. Oh, you said coordinate, we're gonna do that too. We're getting the air out, now we wanna get the air in and make it look good and coordinate at the same time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This is something new for you guys. This is our new 2014 True Flow Air Cleaner. And the design that we wanted to go with actually resembled kind of an exhaust tip, so we made it match our exhaust. So now then everything ties together from exhaust to air cleaner, wheels and everything. Lots of different choices. Well, let's get this one up. Talk about an easy switch. Stock air cleaner comes off and ours bolts right back in the stock location. Okay, Chris, got the True Flow air cleaner on here. Now we need to get this air fuel ratio all set up right. You got anything for us? Yes, we do. We have a RCX accelerator module, which is a closed loop system, and it's plug and play system. We supply a wiring harness, which you've already routed on the bike. It goes to the throttle position sensor, crank position sensor, and the O2 sensor. And what's good about it, this unit, is that there's no programming, no dynoing. As soon as you plug it in, it learns your bike as you ride, so you can do changes at different times, and your bike's always running at its best. And it's looking at its best, thanks to all the great stuff from RC Components, which you can find out more by going to their website at rccomponents.com. Hey folks, that's all we have time for on this week's edition of Performance TV. See you next week. That's just easy, just plug that right in there. Yep.